So when we release a new product or designing it before releasing, we're always thinking about safety, probably the number one thing we think about. And we've had a lot of people say, you got a foot control. We thought about it really hard, put some good deep thought into it. And we looked at it and said, let's make a knee control instead. And there's a couple of really good reasons for that. Number one is that under a lot of conditions, humans have the tendency of stiffening up and freezing when they get into some sort of an accident, a mishap, something like that. You know, at the shop, we see uh, a ton of our machines, whether it's the robotics, or it is the uh, foot pedals for our press brakes, that kind of stuff. They got three positions. They got, uh, when you're not touching it, it's e-stopping it. If you're holding it lightly, it's operating. And when you're really pressing it way too hard, AKA the, the, the robot is coming towards you and you're squeezing it, uh, you're tensing up. It also runs an e-stop alert as well on the machine. And so for a foot pedal for us, it didn't make sense that if a person was going to pinch themselves or have their hand in the wrong spot per se, that they were going to tense up and you know stiffen up on the foot control before their brain could realize what was happening to release the pressure off that foot control. Whereas with the knee control, it's very simple. Your knee is in somewhat of a bent condition already when you're operating it. And so if there's an incident and you stiffen up, your knee will automatically come off that knee control and the machine will go up into its home position. So from a safety point of view, uh, that was the most important and you know one of the first reasons why we said, hey, a knee control might be a better way of doing this. Second reason was, was that we don't have anything below the machine. So let's say you're splitting wood in the winter, it is slippery out and you know you stumble or slip and you accidentally come on that you know foot control. Uh, that could easily happen. But the same thing could happen from a knee control point of view too. So that's not a particularly uh, big difference from a foot control. But when you go around to move the machine or uh, if you have it in storage, you don't need to raise that knee control up off the ground. You can very simply just, you know, have your knee control here. And when you're done with it, you can drive away. You don't need to lift up the knee control. You don't need to do, you know, something like that. It's just in its position all the time. It's never really in the way. And you don't have to use the knee control too. It's got a handle control on the top and you can use either or. You don't need to just use, um, you know, the knee control by itself. So if you have someone new or someone not as comfortable with the knee control, just use the hand control. They can get used, you know, in conjunction with one another and it's not stuck with just the knee control if you get that option. So beyond safety, 
We also want to look at ergonomics. You know, how easy is it to use this? Now you'll notice we got a big old long neoprene pad on here. So not only is it maybe touching the side of your knee, it's also coming down to probably quarter way down the shin in certain cases. And so you're only actuating that knee controls very minor amount of movement. We're not moving it four or five inches sort of thing. You're just giving it about a two inch bump to get that knife to actuate in the down position. So it's very easy to use that way. And beyond that, one thing that we really noticed on a lot of foot controls, and we see this in the shop too, on certain machines again, where we have foot controls or foot pedals, because it's mostly electronic, is that in certain cases, if the foot pedal has not been designed properly, the person is constantly picking up their whole foot to actuate the foot pedal. And if they're picking up their whole foot to actuate that foot pedal, that means all their weight is being transferred onto the back foot. And if you're doing that for five or six hours and you're transferring your weight consistently to that back foot, it can get pretty fatiguing. So with a knee control, you can actually have good weight or even weight on both feet. And it's very easy just to move that knee over and bump that knee control. And it's a very easy actuation. People kind of look at it and say, ooh, does that actually work? And man, it is super simple to operate. And just keep in mind that if you're, if you're getting 1165, you don't need to get the knee control right away. You see, all the options that we offer can be added later, even the lifter. And so we get a bunch of people that say, well, I don't feel like I need it now. Uh, and go ahead, use the machine for two years and get it after two years if that really is something you want to be doing. Um, this here is probably one of the first 1165s that we built. And I just finished adding this to it last week. It works fantastic. So we can bolt right up in a matter of 10, 15 minutes. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, Splitfire is trying to make a machine that is safe for the clientele buying this machine. I understand that if you are a commercial firewood guy and you've split and cut wood for 20 years, you might look at this and scratch your head. But at the end of the day, we might be selling this to someone that has uh, splitting needs of 5, 10, 20 cords a year that might not have the experience that everyone else does. And so the knee control for us is just a, a safer and easier way of having that hands-free control uh, get done. So we got some maple here. We're going to split it up and you can kind of see how this works. And for all the people that critiqued us, there's a lifter with the lip on it. So nice little addition.
Alrighty, so that is the 1165V with a knee control. Now, if you've got questions about it or you're trying to install it, there's a link to a how-to video right here. And if you're curious about pricing, head to split-fire.com for the build and price. It's a fantastic little piece of software there that'll help you figure out what it's gonna cost to get one of these to your door. And if you got more questions, head to YouTube. There's a ton of people beyond us that have this machine and can vouch for it as well. So we appreciate your time and have a good day.